So now that I've hopefully convinced you guys, this is the case that our sample proportion is also going to fall on approximate normal, just like our, num our, our number of successes did, um, with a mean of p and a standard deviation of the square root of p q over n. So this is just like our previous examples when we had this um, that we used on the last page of exam three or exam two. Now, in order for this to actually be true, for us to have this normal distribution, there are some things that we need to check out before we can, can say, yes, let's, let's draw a normal curve and do stuff. Um, so we have four conditions that we must satisfy. Um, most of them kind of come from our bins, because in order for this to be true, we need to have a binomial experiment underneath. Um, so we still need our independent trials, right? Each person needs to be independent of one another. That way our probability of success stays the same for each person or our proportion is used is reasonable for each person. Um, in order for this to be true, we need to have a simple random sample, right? Simple random sample and independence tend to go hand in hand. Um, the other types of sampling we do in this course do have some bias built into them. So you cannot use the easy formulas we have. In fact, there are more complicated formulas to use if you do a stratified or a cluster or a systematic sample. Um, number three is probably the weirdest one here. Our sample size must be no larger than 10% of the population. This sort of is at odds with number four. Number four says our sample size must be large enough uh, so that we have our rule of thumb met. And this is the same rule of thumb we had for the approximate normality uh, on a binomial experiment. So this has not changed. NP and NQ both greater than or equal to 10. Uh, we talked about why that was necessary back in part five so that we weren't uh, too close to the edges of our distribution and hitting up against the sides. So just to show you what that would look like, um, let me change this so that we only have, oops, that's not what I wanted, so that we only have 100, and let's change this to something where we're not going to have that rule of thumb. Let's maybe do 0 0.02. So if we use these numbers here, um, our NP would be 2, which is well short of our 10 that we need. So if I was to use these numbers, and do my thousand runs, you can see our proportion of heads is not symmetric. This does not follow a normal distribution. So that piece still makes sense, but it's still sort of at odds. Like I said, we need an N to be large enough, but we also need to be no larger than 10% of our population. And the reasoning for number three is because when we did our um, sampling without replacement, right? because that's how most of the time sampling is not done using replacement. If I choose to put someone into my sample, I say, okay, I'm choosing a student at random and I choose Ashley. I am not gonna put Ashley's name back in the hat because that would be a waste of my time to ask Ashley the same questions again, right? And she probably wouldn't want to answer those questions again. So instead what I would do is I'd take out that name, crumple it up, and I would be doing sampling without replacement. But if you remember sampling without replacement, mean that if I'm looking for, say, the proportion of left-handed people, if we had 15 of the 100 students being left-handed, and I happen to have chosen one that what, the next one, right, would be 14 out of 9. There's, there's that weird changing of the fraction, so our probability of success doesn't stay the same. Uh, without replacement means that we don't have that independence that we need. So what this 10% thing is about is if that is a small enough sample, the difference between... 14 over 100 and 13 over 99 is negligible enough that we can ignore it. So we're actually just leveraging that when we're talking about this is saying, okay, as long as it's a small enough difference or small enough proportion that I'm taking, I don't have to think about changing that fraction. So I can ignore the fact that this really means that there's no independence. So that's, that's our four, four requirements. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do an example of this. I'm going to go ahead and do it in a different video so we can break this up a little bit more. 